West West Show. Welcome back to another episode of the 135 Footy Show. I'm your host, Tana, and I'm joined by the boys again tonight. Um, Stacey Tiriani from the Counter-Rack. How's it going, Uso? What's up, man? Thanks for having me on again, Us. Uh, you're welcome, bro. Good to have you on. Thanks for joining us, man. And uh, back after a couple of uh, episodes, hiatus, uh, Simon Amani, our columnist from the Wes Wes Network. How's it going, Us? What's up, Uso? Yeah, good, bro. Been, been, been good, man. Um, nice to be here, bro. Yeah, busy, Hello, love it. Shop, bro. Yeah, um, yeah, it's been a while since you've been on, bro. So, um, good to have you back on. We're gonna dive straight into a big game tonight. So, um, let's start into this so we can uh, catch that game on the other end. Um, quickly wanted to just wrap the games from last week. Um, quickly go through those, see what you saw. Um, some of the teams solidifying their places in the eight, um, and others pretty much showing us their hand and preparing for next year. Um, starting that off, kicking that off, is the the Dragons-West Tigers game. Um, yeah, real one of those hard watches. Um, you know, one of, a couple of the, the lower teams playing Spoiler there. Spoiler out, uh, better way. Pretty much, man, pretty much. <laughs> um, yeah, and I mean, Tupo played well. Uh, Tupo from the Tigers got a double um, to allow him Denied him a hat trick, which probably would have won the Tigers the game. Uh, any of you boys catch that that game? Oh yeah, I, I caught some of it. Caught the highlights of it. Like so I said, that was a battle for the wooden spoon. So I think the Tigers, after that loss, you know, they might be locked in for that wooden spoon. So yeah, I saw a bit of it in a game that really didn't garner a lot of excitement, except for probably their hardcore fans. I thought Zach Lomax. Yeah, he was he was. He was good there on that right edge. So uh, the coach has moved him back to the right side after the old coach Griffin. He experimented with a little bit with him on the left. And it looks like it's working from being back on the right. Mm. So good to see him playing good again. He's been better since um, Hook got the hook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. See, those types of quips is why you're the columnist. I don't, know if he's <laughs> one, I don't know if he's one of those players like, was like, finally, this can's got the fucking sack. But yeah, he's been, even his kicking's been really good because it was mud during the year, eh? Yeah. Well, he was right. one that I was hoping was going to have a big year. That's why I had him in my super mm. team, um, in, my, in my team right at well, the beginning. Couple, I think two, three years ago, bro, he was he was up there in the... Um, yeah, in the uh, super which, coach. Dare I say the New South Wales merry-go-round of centres, but yeah. I think it just <laughs> slipped back in the pack. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I mean, now he's about... You know, fifth, sixth of New South Wales centres, so he might get a chance next year. Mm. Yeah, um, there's a couple joke. of guys in your team who haven't, a uh, couple of guys in your team, Tano, who haven't been performing in a super coach, so I'm not surprised yeah. at Lomax. Oh, doesn't help when I leave them on the bench. Um, before we move on from the Tigers, though, in this game, um, we'll probably touch on them when we, when we discuss the, the run to the eight, but oh, what do they do with the rest of these six six weeks? Um, rebuilding for the for the end of next year, or just trying to finish up the year. Yeah, it's a tough one because I think that the side they put out that's, that's that's the best side they've got. So you can't make these mass changes if and they haven't got the depth to mm. sort of f- fulfill those teams. So I think you're just going to have to kick forward, maybe yeah, try to implement their ideas. And I suppose some of the shining lights like Jareem Bullet fullback's been very good for them. That's he a looks good. The future he looks for them. good, man. Um, maybe they could give some of the young guys a, a go and, and look to cut some of these older guys because I think they need another roster overhaul if they're going to get back to back wooden spoons. And it's disappointing because I think if, at the start of the season, if we look at who they signed, they got um, yeah, Popoli, the Uppy, mm. that that English back rower who's a bit of a gun. Oh, Bateman, yes. Bateman, yeah. um, Clemmer. Well, be some pack, bro. Like, they, yeah. they have. Mm. And as a fan, if my team was running, like, yeah, you, you can, you know, you can look at the future of blood, some young ones, but I, man, I, I, I don't know. Tell us what it was like a couple of years ago when you were in this position. <laughs> <laughs> How did it feel? I, I still want like, well, I still want results. You know what I mean? So I, I think they should put they should put the best available players week in week out, and and just just try steal some wins, man. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think you should like for the kitchen sink out and then just think, oh, yeah, let's put on all our SG ball players or look to the future. Because, um, man, you know, sponsorship and membership 
everything's still, you know, you've still got six, seven weeks to go on the comp, man. So, so as a fan, you still want them showing up. You still want... It's, I think it's it's the way they lose. So this is a good game, but they're both teams are guy. But, like, if, if as a fan, if you show up and your team loses but still put in the effort and, and, and the scoreline's not been blown away and your team looks like they haven't given up, that's all you ask for, really. Yeah, I think also if you talk about, we talked about this a bit on the podcast, but the importance of the spine. So if you look at Jareem Buller, he's he's good. Adam Dewey, if he was, he's been out injured for the whole season. He's a decent 5'8". Luke Brooks, he gets a lot of criticism, but he's at least in a roll standard halfback. And then up, he's one of the better hookers. That's a decent spine if they could keep everyone on the field. Um, they just haven't had a chance to play together. All of them have um, you know, Dewey's out for the season and the other two have been out injured. So that hasn't helped their cause. Despite their forward pick, and uh, yeah, I think that's the other thing. Like that, they've just got to, like you're saying, so I play those players and just play the year out because, again, the the, the way they play, like when they were having that really good run, um, it, it's a it's an exciting kind of way to play, but it, it's real. Like you know, every pass has to hit its mark. Um, so yeah, maybe just a bit more time, um, and like like Stace was saying, just those spine, like getting them to actually be able to play a few games consistently like there's been so many changes in that spine yeah they, they need to they need to fix up their defense because like you say to they play a real exciting brand offloads and short passes and all the rest of it but if the passes don't don't work if the passes go to ground they can't defend those errors they keep letting in tries so um it's all well and good to play this sort of yeah, high risk true. high reward attack but if you can't defend the errors if you make mistakes then that's where it can be a bit of a there's a downside to that sort of style Nice. Very good. Um, all right, moving on to the uh, that awesome Friday night's game. Um, I know we be, we definitely watched it. Stace, you, did you get along? Nah, nah, not this time. Eh? I went to the one the week before. Uh, I went to that game against the Sharks, but this one you didn't get to go. Um, but it looked like it was a really good atmosphere. And I know they sang the team song through the crowd. I saw some of that on social media. So the crowd's really jumping in behind the yeah. the Warriors, which is good to see. But, um, yeah, that was an interesting game. The Warriors were good for 77 minutes, 75 yeah. minutes, whatever. And they almost let it slip there at the end. But, you know, the Raiders heading into that game, they were coming forth. So they're a, they're a decent side um, heading into that clash. So you've got to expect that they're not going to just roll over and quit. Um, I like the composure that the Warriors had an extra time from their big game players. So it was uh, Fenor Blake... Uh, Toy Harris and Chance Nickel Clocks there. They took the hit ups before Sean Johnson slotted that field goal. So good to see the experienced leaders stepping up with the game on the line. So that's three wins against top eight sides in a row. So I've beaten two top four sides and another top eight sides in the last three weeks. So um, pretty rough schedule. And it's good to get the bye now, I think, um, this mm. week. Yeah, good timing too for that one. So um, what did you take out of that game from the Warriors, man? But it was an entertaining game. <clears throat> I don't um Raiders um Raiders are a tough team, bro, and they got a really uh, they got a you know they got representative forwards, tough tough forward pack. But I, I think Raiders are um, in the back line a bit clunky. Um, I, I think Whiten's really their um sole um danger man. <clears throat> uh, Tomoko's like uh t- he's he's one on one. He's he's pretty mean, bro, but. I just I just think that Raiders kind of lack um lack, lacking those finishing touches uh, to be a genuine um, premiership contender. So um, in that regard, like oh I don't know, man. Um, uh, as a as a Warriors fan, used to well, wouldn't you guys be a bit concerned that they couldn't really put them away? You know, if if there was another <clears throat> if there was another top eight team, um. You know, chasing chasing that game and coming after you guys, I think they would have called the Warriors, bro. I think the Warriors are just a bit lucky to get away with that one, bro. And I'd be a little bit concerned for you guys. And you know what the other concerning thing is? Is the um I don't know if it's a concern or you know, it depends on what side of the coin you look at it, but they've got a really um easy run home, bro. I don't think the rest of the teams uh bar I think they play the Panthers and um no. We don't play the no, 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 no. I think they play a couple of. Run. Well, I think they play a couple of a couple of um teams left in the eight. But apart no. from that, it's a pretty easy run in. So we've got an all easy run now. Is it? I think the highest team we played is the Dolphins, who are eleventh. 
So we've well, got all bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like bottom come and, and oh, we've got regard, Cowboys. Like, are they going to get? Are they going to get the games where it really tests them out, like on defense? So I don't know, bro. It's it's been an awesome year. Uh, they're definitely um, going towards top four. I don't know if they can get the top two, but if they get the top two with a home, you know, first first oh, game at home, home quarter, yeah. then they've got genuine, you know, it's going to be tough to beat. Um, I think that makes a big difference, not only top four, but top two, just to get their home crowd. Because then you got two, if you're in the top two, then you got two games at uh, Ericsson, at uh, Mount Smart Stadium, Mails, and then it'll be a tough, tough, tough team to beat. But um, I, I'm not a hater, but I, I just... It sounds I, like it. Well, I'm still <laughs> un, they, they haven't um they haven't fully I think it's been a good year so far, but mm. if we're talking about premiership contenders, and I've got a list. I've got a list of three. They ain't in my three, man. Mm. Oh, yeah, I, I think it's a, probably a, a good thing. Like um, like there is still improvement, and I think that's what's positive for me. Like there is obvious things, like the the closing out of that game. You know, there was um. Sean Johnson, you know, controlled that game throughout, you know, those kicks early in play, you know, they were working for us, just backing the D. Um, and then probably just at the end of that game, you know, using that same um, tactic, uh, it's probably, you know, good for him to kind of do that now. You know, we're, we're lucky to get away with that win. Um, but then the composure showing an extra time, you know, that's... Uh, he, he saw it on, on the Raiders' face, like even um, Croker taking that kick. It was like a smirk, like, you know, we've, we've seen this Warriors before and and they were getting ready to celebrate and just give it to us, you know, and, and have a laugh. So I was glad to see the the change in the, in the Warriors. Um, and a real good lesson. Um, right at the end of that full time, you see Fanua Blake come up to, um, you know, Sean go up to Fanua Blake. Um, and that's a real tight relationship I've seen, you know, those two um, ever since Fanua Blake's come across. So um, good to just see those leaders, you know, really um, keep each other accountable. Um, you know, seeing them celebrate and then seeing them, you know, really, um, just for Noah Blake, really disappointed in, in the fact that they were in that position. Um, yeah, just gives me positive signs, you know, that there's heaps that we are continuing to build on. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that run to the eight. And, uh, yeah, I can't believe it. we're talking about Warriors poss- possibly going to be finishing top two, top four. Um, happy days. Yeah. Yeah, I think like what Simon's mentioned before, we've got that easy run, but that's sort of just the foibles of the draw because we've had four top eight teams in a row mm. and two top four teams in, in that, that run. So um, we've had, we've gone through the hard part and now we're on to the easy section. So I mentioned before the Dolphins um, are the best... Uh, sorry, the Sea Eagles at 11th. That's the highest team we'll face in these last our last five games. So if we can run the table, which they should... You know, you're still sort of relying on the Bronx or the Panthers to slip up, um, and I, I don't, I'm not sure that they'll, they'll do that. So that that four point gap, I, I think the Warriors can win all their games and still not close that gap. I think the Broncos and the Panthers will have to drop um, some of their, their last games, and I'm not convinced. So third or fourth, I mean, the Warriors were favourites for the wooden spoon at the start of the season, so oh, you'd take that any day of the week. So <laughs> all in all, I'm pretty happy with, with where we're at. Yeah, nice. All right, so I'll let you uh, take this one first, bro. Your Broncos up against the Rabbitohs, a pretty messy game, um, despite the scoreline. But um, yeah, what did you see in that game, man? What are you calling out for your team to probably look forward to in the, the run to the finals? Yeah, it was um, uh, it was disappointing in, in, in the fact that it was, you know, to be honest, it wasn't wasn't really high quality. Eh? Um, but both teams didn't really. <clears throat> Um, put each other under too much pressure in, in terms of, you know, grinding out, trying to get, <clears throat> trying to get some fatigue and in, in, into each other's legs. But um, so in, in that regard, the, the Broncos were quite lucky because um, we gave up a lot of ball in that first half, and um, <clears throat> uh, Cody Walker was was able to um, unlock. You know, and saying that because Cody Walker, man, he will you give. You give him enough ball, he will he'll put he'll put you to fucking you know. Um, so I think he I think he um, grabbed a couple of tries, man. We can live with that because there were some moments out there where um, and uh, I thought Stacks probably had his best game after their first their first half. Yeah, 
man, he come up, he come up really fast, and he's he kind of like um can he, he does that like a lot, you know, like instead of just picking and choosing his moments. But I, I think coming in the second half, they they defended um they defended um Cody Walker and uh, and their their left hand side a, a bit a bit more so. In saying that, uh, it was good for the Broncos to be um, to be behind on the scoreboard uh, in their first half and to not play their best because it meant that in the second half we we saw what they're capable in the second half. That um, that one they can come back from behind and two you know w- once they get their set completion up there um, they they got they got firepower bro. they they can they can outscore um, anyone on the comp. That's what that's what I'm confident about, and that's why I really think they can go all the way. Um, defensively, um, they can't give up too much ball like that. Um, they did in the first half. And then it's uh, when you think they were missing a um, big out for Latrell, um, you know, who knows what their score would have been in their first half, you know, because I think it was about 60% completion rate from, from the Bronx, and we are just quite lucky that South's weren't all that good. Um, so it was good to get a, a win over our team like Celts, but <clears throat> concerning for the Bunnies, um, you know, they, they don't very, look looking very good in the last two, three weeks, in the last month, really. I mm-hmm. think Latrell's uh, is a good time for them to come because I'm still picking them to make the eight. They're, they're outside of the eight. I think they're ninth. Um, but yeah, bro, Bron- Broncos still soldiering on, man. They, um, they did what they had to do and you got a glimpse of I think when it was required that they picked it up, but we just need to see that for eighty minutes, bro, for them to be really to be confident, um, genuine premiership contenders. Stace, um, yeah, yeah, oh, it was um, it was a disappointing match, like Simon mentioned. Twenty nine errors in that match. Uh, the Rabbits completed at sixty six percent, which is slightly better than the Bronx at sixty five percent. Coming back to what Simon <sighs> mentioned earlier. Yeah, that was unfortunate because I think in our preview, sort of last week, we thought this could be potentially the match of the round. Mm. But, you know, th- that win for the Bronx pushes the Rabbits outside the top eight for the first time this season. And I think one interesting thing that came from out of that game was Lockie Elias. He didn't kick the ball at all. So, I mean, as a yeah. seven, that, yeah, that's one of his main roles. And, you know, as, and as good as Cody Walker is, like you mentioned, Sai, that's not a real strength of his game, the kicking side. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure what happened there, but it's sort of symptomatic of the rabbit struggles in the past few months. So uh, Latrell's return is timely, which you mentioned, Simon, as well. They need to turn things around quickly if they're genuine about playing a bigger role in the finals. So, yeah, good one from the Bronx. Yeah, um, probably the only thing I'll add was just, um, yeah, um, amazing return from Reese Walsh. Um, just yeah, just his, his touches, just um, the impact he has on that team too, um, and his combination of Reynolds. So yeah, I think that's a, a huge in um, having him back. Um, but man, Reynolds hands all over that game in that second half. Um, we'll, we'll speak to that when we get back to the um, when we start talking about the run, the top eight teams. Um, Saturday night games onto the uh, Roosters Titans. Um, Man, Roosters, I'm pretty sure I put a, t- a, a pin through them a couple of weeks ago. St- Stace, did you catch this game? Yeah, yeah, I caught that one. It was um, the performance we've been, all been waiting for from the Roosters, given their roster. But yeah, I'm with you. I think it's probably too little, too late for them. You know, Tedesco, I thought he had, he's had his critics um, so far this season, and rightly so, given some of his performances. But he put in a masterclass on the weekend. So uh, as one of New South Wales' uh, favourite sons, it was always nice to see that. Um, yeah, but that, that was probably the, what the Roosters' best game possibly this year. I can't remember them playing this good for a long time. So, yeah, timely reminder of how good they should be with the roster they've got. Yeah. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how well they kick on and um, if this is a turn on, turning point. Uh, welcome 800,000 winger in the world. <laughs> well, we're not at your team yet, mate. Uh, but welcome, Wolves. Did you catch this Roosters game? Nah, I'm just like that guy that just sits in the corner while you guys chat about something that I have no idea about. <laughs> uh, you just, you're just waiting to you, you hear your ears prick up for uh, hearing yeah, some New South Wales just, players' uh, names. 
something from the 1990s or 2000s. Uso, Uso Swali, you, you got anything about that boy? He's going to Union. One of your your boys coming to Union. See, Stop. I didn't even know about that. Didn't even know about that. I'm just, you know, like I said, I'm just that guy in the corner or just at that uh, gathering that you guys are <laughs> drinking up at. And I'm just sitting there, just waiting to jump in. Is there anything? What's there? with your mammals? Is, Anything is a, subject matter? Uh, is there, are you ripping like Dallin uh, what's in his listening? He, he miss your old long hair or something? <laughs> <laughs> this guy wants his perm Let's get it right, okay, Simon. I never had a mullet, okay. I never had the moulet. Oh, you okay? sure? Never had the oh. moulet. I, may, just just I, may, have, I may have had a bit of full frontal at the high school days. <laughs> 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 no, Facebook photos of a no fine moulet. One. No, no, no. I think no, we no, can. No. If we uh, if we dig deep, we might be able to find some photos, mate. Well, well, like I said, I'm just that guy about whilst about the, the no, gathering no while, the ga- while the gathering's happening. I'm just sitting in the corner there, sipping on my tea, and while you know, looking out for something. I can jump in on, especially one of those games like Ship Came Into a Harbour. At the moment, <laughs> I'm just going to keep sitting in the corner. 800k <laughs> winger is all about, you know, I couldn't believe that Daniel Dupo, aka Simon Amani, is only worth uh, 400k. <laughs> anyway, like I said, continue, and I'll just sit in the corner, and if there's something that I can jump in on, I'll pounce. I'll pounce. Yeah, no, nah, um, yeah, I, I think that was the same thing. Just watching that Roosters game, just how they clicked. Um, man, Teddy was so busy, like just back to his old, like that's what he brings, just that energy and just getting around the field. And yeah, I don't know if they're just um, some timely returns on the team. Um, yeah, I don't know if um, Joseph, Joseph Swali has been um, suspended or injured, but yeah, I haven't really noticed him or he hasn't really kind of, you know, after all of the, the talk about signing to Union, he's been quiet, but man, he had an awesome game as well. Yeah. Um, that leap when he scored that try, <laughs> and that's just uh, so. It'll be interesting if these guys do kick on. Um, we'll give them a plug when we get to the uh, discussions around the eight again. Yep. Um, man, the Knights, the Knights taking out the Storm. I don't think we caught that, bro. I'm sure you caught Storm as well, bro. Um. Did you catch this one, Sai? Uh, yes, um, we're talking about the Knights game. <clears throat> yeah, bro. Bro, Knights was like, um, it's almost like it's too little too late, but man, they're just showing glimpses. It's a little bit, um, as a Knights fan, you'd be a bit frustrated, bro, because it's, um, they've got this performance in the males, and, um, but we just haven't seen it enough. Um, they got a mean attack, and um, and to be honest with you, the storm weren't all that bad, bro. So it was probably the night's best, best performance of the um the year, really. Um, they, I don't know if it's enough to propel them to um, because uh, if you're thinking about teams outside of eight that's gonna make it, you got to think about who's gonna drop down, mm. and based on performances, I think sharks, maybe possibly will drop down. Um, and I don't know about the Eels, the Eels as well are a bit scratchy because, um, because they've just got a hard run, but I mean, yeah, that, that Cowboys game they didn't look too bad, but man, they're gonna be those teams, bro, that will just fall out of to you know, the teams trying to go yeah. for the eight. I, I think it's a little bit too little, too late. Um, they're, they're uh, mainly in the same bracket as well. So, yeah, where, we're, um, they're capable we're outside the eight, so yeah. But yeah, they'll be one of those teams. They're, they're going to be one of those teams. They're going to fuck the Yanga Mia. That's what Manly <laughs> going to do. We're going to fuck the Yanga Mia. Okay, I'll just That's go right. back to my corner, mate. I'll oh, just sorry, go back to my corner. Didn't see you there. I just thought I'd pounce in on there. Hey, don't well, discard the uh, Manly Seagulls, mate. Exactly. We're going to come from eleventh. We're going to come from eleventh. You hear it here first. Please, we're going to come from eleventh. These teams, the same. To what? To tenth. Come from eleventh to tenth. So you say like Knights. Seagulls, Titans, Roosters had a guy a year, but we'll find out how every now and then, you know, some of these teams yeah. were vying for the eight. So, like, um, Storm, I think it's just Bawa was a bad day at the office sales. Um, I, I still think Storm are capable of winning the comp. Um, but um, with, with Bellamy and some of these superstars, and um, you know, they can't, you can't discount them, bro. It was just. Um, you just got to give credit to the um, 
to 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 the Knights, bro, and, and ask yourself, man, where where was these kind of performances all year, man? Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. Like these these very big teams, like I, I guess the Storm aren't in the same boat as the Roosters, um, but they haven't been the Storm like just culturally, uh, just not Storm performances. Like I think you. You kind of look around and try and scratch your head. What what's different? You know, Craig Bellamy kind of seems a bit lost with the team at times in his press conferences too. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, that's that's interesting. You mentioned that Tana because um, I heard Cam Munster. He got interviewed after the game and he mentioned that he can't remember the last time the Storm were beaten in like the effort areas mm. and, and like they were on the weekend against against the Knights. And he questioned his team's attitude. And, you know, things like effort and attitude, that's what the storm has been built yeah, on. Exactly, so. yeah. They've never had those superstars. So yeah. you can't be like, oh, they, they're missing like a key or a Pappenhausen because that, that's not what the storm's been about. You know, it's right. just gritty players. Yeah. Like Fanukin, you know, that's why you, you look at the Sharks are losing him for the, the rest of the, the year. But that's the kind of players that, like when Tohu left, you know. Mm. Um and I guess that's the thing, like as much as you look at the Bromwich boys going to the Dolphins, it, some of that kind of reflects too, just some of that real gritty, you know, like uh, Jesse in the middle, you know, never he's not a flashy player, but he does the job of of what is, you know, Ford should lead like. So, um, yeah, interesting comments from um, Munster. And I see even um, Olam, Olam off the back of such a good year, it got dropped cold. Good year and a good. He been dropped. He. he got dropped cold. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because I think um, the other centre, Remus Smith, has picked up an injury too. So you'd think, or oh, he's potentially changing both centres. I haven't seen the other the side. I'll have to check, but I'm sure Remus Smith is out injured. So to to drop one centre when you've already lost the other one, yeah, yeah. that's that's a bit cool. But I think yeah, coming back to what um, they talked about with Cam Munster that might be sort of paying the price because I don't think his form has necessarily been that, that bad. Mm. But you can't play for Bellamy and not put an effort and not have a good attitude because you doesn't matter who you are, you will flip and throw you up to... Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. All right. Um, cool. Let's move on to the um, the last game of that Saturday night, the one we... We all look forward to everyone came to the house and Pete fell asleep before the kickoff. <laughs> the Cowboys and Eels game. Um, man, the Cowboys. Um, people are wrapping them, you know, looking for that late run. Uh, I don't know. There was glimpses that game. Like, there was, um, they got off to a good start. I don't know. Um, so, did, did you catch this one as well? Yes, I, um, I thought Eels were poor, man. And yeah. they're, they're one of the teams I thought will come strong. Um, you still got another six, seven rounds to go, but <clears throat> Cowboys for me, uh, the form team of the comp, bro. They um, they just add a little bit different uh, on attack. Um, like any other team, it will come down to who's got the better defense, and, and Panthers are head and shoulders above everyone else on defense. But if if you're in the top eight, you'd be worried about our Cowboys attack, like. Man, they've got some, <clears throat> like, Dearden, he's playing Dearden, awesome, bro. Uh, yeah. Dearden and Drinkwater, man, with those two just, you know, they just play kind of, I don't want to say unorthodox, but it's hard to defend, bro. They they, they kind of go across field. They've got some good runners who hit holes, bro. So it wasn't a, it wasn't all that kind of a game, eh? It was, um, but um, another two points for the Cowboys, bro, and they're just, they're just rolling the series up. I don't think, I think... Maybe their fourth spot's up for grab. I, I think um, we were just talking about earlier with the Warriors and their run home. Got a pretty decent run home. I think they cemented their third spot. Everyone's expecting the Broncos to like slip up, but I think they'll keep that second spot. So the performance of the Storm over there, um, I think their fourth spot's still up for grabs, bro. So, um, yeah, no, man. It's, um, it, was, it was one of those games where you think, like, man, do Eels have it? Because, you know, a couple of years, a couple of weeks ago, you are like, man, Eels is coming home strong. But now it's like, who knows? It's a, it's a tough comp, bro. And um, one or two good games in a row will give you that momentum. And um, the Eels got a bit of a fight there. Eels are in that same bracket that we were just talking about, Manly. And, you know, we you either be uh, just make the A team or follow our male team. Hey, man, we're going to be both. <laughs> 
a learn a mere to yourselves. We're gonna be following a mere, we're gonna creep in like those last those teams just sort of outside of the eight. There's only a point or two that separate mm. three or four teams, so they're not only going to be ruining and tr- causing other teams to fall out of the eight, they're going to try and make their way in the eight. And well, it's really a realistic It's not looking too good with the Roosters. not looking too good with the Roosters at the moment against the Broncos. Yeah, but. 12 nil, 12 nil uh, update. But um, yeah. uh, as we've got um, 800,000k winner there, um, hey, it was the, the, um, the run home for Manny's. It's kind of put it's them good, in the It's good, man. Because the Warriors, the Warriors are in decent. that lineup. Yeah, they, well, they got four yeah. decent games where they should win, right? These are teams outside the eight. But I think they need to get one win out of the Warriors and the Panthers. And that's the big question, Marcos. Are they capable? Who knows? Well, DCE is having a mean year, but the rest of them, mate, they're, they're really just, I don't know, bro. They're up and down. They're good talent, but they're, they're, they're not growing up. Apart from Jack Tavulovic, they're, they're uh, very, yeah, I don't know. Mm. Half their salary caps injured, so that's why. <laughs> well, Tommy, you know. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't get So they played they played um, the Sharks last week and they're playing them again this week. Oh, yeah. Which they should win. Oh, huh? nah, they're not playing well, them again. Oh, sorry. Dragons, Dragons, Dragons. But then they've got the Dragons, so Dragons are another <laughs> team that uh, yeah. have been getting the odd result here and there. But then we've got the Eels a uh, week after that. Oh, that should be one you go to. Um, but then, yeah. yeah, the Panthers and then the Warriors. And then we finish on the West Tigers. Yeah, a couple of so, years ago, yeah. But then at the same time, the Tigers, when they pulled out a result out of the blue. So If you're worried about the Tigers, then you're not going to make that, bro. <laughs> I'm just putting it up there now. I if think, you're thinking, um, oh, but then the Tigers might be something. Then, you know, <laughs> then the, hey, then um, they'll, they'll be watching. The I was, I was trying to Manly finish my sentence. I wasn't. It wasn't an invitation for you to have a comment. It wasn't an invitation for you to make a remark there, Stacey. I was trying to finish my sentence. Carry Again, on, I'm just going to finish this game and just watch and uh, look in the corner. I'll be in the corner. <laughs> Mathematically, it's possible for Manly, but really, every game is 50-50. We don't know which Manly is going to show up. Exactly. <clears throat> yep, it's been there kind of of Ola Kawatu, Aloai, the way that they and Lodge. I think Lodge has been a good acquisition. Oh, Lodge. Oh, wow. Yep. Are you serious? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like go, yes, give, go, going off that game last week can Sharks. Like a lot better acquisition than Aaron Woods. Even Josiah is just like shaking his head and scratching his head about uh, Aaron Woods. No, I've been with Woods. Uh, what? You were in no. with Woods. Negative, negative. No. So Lodge, Lodge is a good acquisition, you know, for the back, the business end of our, you, our season. You know how it's just much, a hard and hard and up. Business end of your season. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, the back end of the season, the business good, end. Good for Matt, Matt, I, I want to ask Rog. I want to ask Rog. Do you think it's been a um, hey Rog? Do you think it's been a bit of a um, a fail when they got rid of uh, uh, Murray and? Um, now they're struggling for a bit of uh, depth on that bench. No, no, no. We're glad that Marty Topa all went with his high knees to the Broncos. Wow. We don't, we don't... <laughs> yes, good wow. he's gone there with high knees. We've had a mean um, season so far, bro. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, he's going to cost you guys. That's what he's going to do. He's going to cost you guys. But um, you guys are reaching for the barrel for Aaron Woods, and now you guys are reaching for the lunch. I'm just saying. Lunch. I know, I know. Clearly, Lodge is on a, a week clearly, by week contract. Guys, a week by week contract. Thanks for no, no, no. Walk about I think it's just freed up a bit of money. It's freed up a bit of money with Marty going. But then when you got the likes of Josh Schuster on 800k, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I wanna, um, can I just give a stand up for Marty here? I think he got a. Oh, I think he was trying to do a goosey. But it was like... Yes, I agree with that. Nah, nah. No, 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 I agree with this. You don't do a no, no, this is a true story. I, I, so, I, because... This yeah. is what, I've got the same theory as Simon. Carry on, Simon. Yeah. Like, it was like... It was like, 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 like the way Jason Swali went up to catch but, it. Nah, nah. Like, you, can't say that, you, you can't say that was a goose. He was trying to do a Yafeta Palacina from <laughs> the early 2000s <laughs> and he just got the timing totally wrong. But all I'm saying is that when you lift the knee, the knee didn't hit Campbell. Is it Cam Graham or... Campbell, the yeah, yeah. It was Graham. It was Graham. Yeah. Bro, the knee didn't hit his face. 
He got bumped off. He got fucking general homage. So I think that was a harsh call, bro. But it was, cold, but it was raising, the, knee, the raising of the knee. It made but, it dangerous for any tackler to come no, in on it. But it didn't connect, bro. It didn't connect. To the shoulder that was right next to his face. Irrespective of whether it connected or not, he's placing it as part of his armory. He can't raise your knee like that. He Truly. just It was just this a total mis... It was a total mistiming. It was a he's an athletics guy. You know? <laughs> well, was he getting ready to well, was, he, was he trying to do was a hurdle or well, was he trying to triple jump? Was he doing a triple jump? Was, three weeks was harsh too, man. That was harsh. That's standard like, for the Brisbane gonna Broncos, cost you. Mate. It's going to cost three you. Weeks standard, standard now, man. Uh, I've been waiting for that kind of run from him all fucking year too, which is quite disappointing. So you can't <laughs> say that was a run. He lifted his knee. He's trying to get the power step in, but mate. totally mistimed it. Yeah, that's what it was. Well, it was just a power step. He was just trying to do yeah. power just, step. that ended up being it was a around his ears of the length of his lunge. It was yeah, like his more last step. Lunch. Yeah, he was getting ready for that last. Oh, he's trying still warming up for the game, mate, because he should have done his lunges at the beginning of the. You know, during the what I'm saying is that if it didn't connect to the head, why penalise him? It was nah, that because it's it's hard for Graham to come in at a tackle at shoulder, trying to bend his shoulder into a tackle when he's going to connect with a knee. So <clears> he sort of like was hesitant, uh, and then of course he's going to no. get bumped off. And I want to say, can I just give a plug? He's a he's a real also for Samoan rep. I seen him in this game. He's behind Kevy in the coach's box wearing his all fale. So, Mari Tapo, I love you also. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. Hey, nah, man. <laughs> all right. From Mari Topao, let's go well, to the Mari Ra Ra Panthers. Ooh, wow, wow. The Ra Ra Panthers with the return of Nathan Cleary. Um, Stace, did you catch this? The uh, Panthers, bro. Getting back yeah. into it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I thought it was um, a good game. Brilliant coaching from Cleary in this game. So you remember Serraldo, he's a um, former not, uh, Panthers assistant coach, so he's well aware of their style. And they like to use their back three, the Panthers, to go to get a lot of their go forward. And that saves the legs of the middle so they can lead the, the defense. But this time, Cleary changed it up and he got uh, Leota and Fisher Harris in particular. They just went beast mode early on and just yeah, ran Fisher through them Harris early on. Beast, yeah, yeah. And, and this game was over by half time. But the Panthers, shucks, yeah, they, they, they deserve to be top of the table. They're the probably the the best team in the comp again. So that's two, three years, maybe four years in a row that they've been the top team. So well done to them. Um, so did you catch this game? Oh, uh, a little bit. All right. Yeah. Um, bro, the Panthers, you got to give them respect. They, they're, um, yeah. they're, they're doing what they've got to do, bro. Um, <clears throat> at the same time, bro, like, you you make the last four of those uh, preliminary finals, man, everyone's in with a chance. I um I, I think they're um they're vulnerable in that kind of like Queensland in the game one kind of saw a blueprint on how how to beat that system, bro. You know they they're heavily relying on Toto and um uh, what is it the Fijian winger there Turuvia and and the fullback to do a lot of the uh, meters, bro. In their first three, bro. Sometimes they go like four or five tackles or backs. And uh, the the big thing of them with their style is uh, um, Kamalo, you know, Mosi Leota and um, and uh, the bro um, Fisher yeah. Harris. Yeah, they're fresh on D, man, and the, and and some defense where they real strangling strangling teams, bro. That's right. So if if you can if you can get those boys, those big boys, uh, a bit of fatigue in their legs to do some work, man. Um, I think it's they're beatable, and I think I think Broncos got the pack to match them, bro. So not even match them, but Dominate, you know, um, um, Haas and um, Haas and uh, Carrigan, bro. They 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 go one on one with anyone, bro. And yeah, I, I just think you can put them under pressure, like like Queensland showed them, like you know, you just got two arms, two legs. No one, no one's unbeatable, bro. Man, but they are front is runs. looking good though. They're front um, runs. Just Sorensen, like I didn't really know much about him before this season. And just seeing him popping up now, like just doing it, doing a job. Just again, that that next man up mentality of the the Panthers. Um, even Mitch Kenny, like you know, they lose Uppy. Mitch just does enough of a job. Uh, doesn't get much reps, but just the way that they work as a team. Um, maybe those kind of things will will count closer to the the pointy end of the season. You know, having you know real hookers. Um, uh, are you guys confident that? Term? 
the Warriors can beat them? Have the team oh, to beat Wade them? Wade Egan, like, I think that's the thing. Like I was saying, we're still improving. What? And the way Wade Egan plays, like, just as much as we wrap Johnson, I'll talk about it when we get to the, the talking about the top eight. But, man, yeah, I think Egan is key to, to our attack and, and the way we move around the park as much as Johnson is, is dictating terms. Um, but, yeah, I, I think, man, that – pretty hard to to kind of as much as you want to beat these guys it's, it's pretty hard to kind of say that it's not likely to be a three p mm. as much as they they are possible on on you know on teams days um yeah i guess this run in will be interesting to see you know they faltered a bit um that that 2021 season their first year um, getting the title and i remember one of the pods in that that lead up you guys thought that they were done that they wouldn't um get through so, I think yeah, that, was why, that was why you score. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so done. it should be interesting, like, how they, they perform over these next six weeks, if they're going to keep this dominance. And, um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Dominance. Okay, going back to that last game, though, Tana, mm. you know, they almost slipped up on that one, you know, for to let the Raiders come in the way they did. They came back, eh? And, man, it could have gone either way. And that, um, it was awesome the way that they obviously won the game in Golden Point. Mm. To let it slip and come, even the bench man, yes. the camera went on the bench. They knew they stuffed up. I mean, oh, no, it, it, it should, sorry, sorry. It should never have um, got down to that, <laughs> that point. Um, eh? I think you might need a hearing aid in that corner. Sorry, all I'm saying, all I'm saying, because was run on the, to the, oh, to the last oh. six games. Yeah, yeah. But Rog, Rog, you have a good point because I, I mentioned that earlier about the Warriors. You don't have a good point. <laughs> not, not to get too mimic up because that, that was concerning the way the Raiders came back and beat the man. Yeah. I mean, um, caught up, sorry. Just to uh, so just, just, just that, that, that conversion. Had that conversion gone over, mate, it was gone bigger. Yeah. Could have what a should have, mate. Could have what a should have. But just to temper, uh, that, just so to temper just... that, that argument, the, the Warriors have played four consecutive games against top eight teams and two consecutive games against top four teams. So I know, it's, I know. It's, it's, like it's one of... in that last sort of five minutes. So the, I think the boys come at the right time. They've, that that, that um, comeback has come on the back of probably the, one of their toughest parts of their schedule. So, no, I thought the mm. Warriors were... If they played them under normal circumstances, I think they would have put them away like they did sort of three, four weeks ago when yeah, they, yeah, they pumped them comfortably. So I think it was the schedule as well uh, had a big part to play. So the boys come at a good time for them. Mm, okay. Oh, I just thought that, you know, just made mention of how, yeah, like so I said, but concerning how they let that almost let them slip, yeah. regardless of the factors behind it, it's just that, uh, how that result. Eager? Yeah, exactly. See, you know, if you guys dropped that one, yeah, but obviously it was different with the celebrations that came um, uh, once uh, Sean Johnson sort of slot, slot that goal. So, awesome result in the end, but man, just those tight ones, and I guess those tight ones shows a little bit of resilience and and sort of um, now it's for the Warriors to be able to still uh, still. Do, put do you that think away. they can win it, uh, Rog? Uh, no. <laughs> Oh, oh. Too much no, no, no. Field, I think because I think it's just gonna, it's still going to be tough, you know. But the, the 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 being able to get a couple of real good results through Golden Point or through close range and that, so but it could easily go the other way. So tight games, real entertaining games, and the Warriors are showing, you know, that they can. But it's just concerning how they can go to the lead, regardless of the fatigue factor or the schedule factor. But, you know, once it comes to knockouts, regardless of whether they finish first, second, third, fourth, um, if they are fifth, you know, it could easily get knocked off because there's no sort of tomorrow per se. So it's just interesting how it's going to go. And hopefully, you know, the, the, like, you, like everyone knows, they've had, had a stellar season thus far. Um, it's just whether they can maintain it. And obviously the Seagulls are going to, uh, give them a bit of a reality check in a few weeks' time and, and knock them back down to earth. All right, boys, let's wrap this out. Let's uh, look at... Uh, all right, this first one looks like it might be done and dusted. we got 20 minutes to run on it, but uh, how you seen this, Si? What's your 20 mind? 20-nil. 20 nil. It's going to be 40 nil soon. And the, and the Roosters are going to be... <laughs> they're playing awesome. Yeah. Well, let's go 20 be... nil. What's happened? You guys can't go on with it, mate. Oh, we'll see, we'll see. Roosters are, are the biggest final in our and I think I think the Warriors are playing them. I'll probably put my money on the Roosters, to be honest. Um, of course you would, because you're a hater. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
I want I that think, to be public knowledge on this podcast that you I are a Warriors so. hater. Yes. Outside the Panthers yes. and the Broncos, Roosters probably will be eighty one tonight because they're on their way up. But you know, Broncos, we just got to do what we're going to do, man. Easy win, forty plus. Twenty minutes, twenty minutes. We'll see, mate. Hopefully, you don't hang up on us before we finish. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, rabbits, uh, rabbits versus the Tigers. I'll let you go on this, Roger. Um, uh, it should be rabbits, rabbits for sure. Oof, yeah, with the return of Latrell. Um, man, could be a hiding to the uh, yeah, I've got Latrell in my super coach team, so hopefully he rips up and wastes the Tigers. <laughs> um, yeah. Eels Storm, Eels for their uh, their top eight position. Everyone's discounting them. Stace, you reckon they've uh, got a chance in this? Storm yeah, no, nah, not really. I think the Eels, I think they've got one of the hardest draws left. So this weekend will be another tough game for them. Uh, they, I saw on the stats they had 32 offloads last week, which is bloody amazing. I don't know if they were effective per se, nah, but that's something. Nah, that was just rubbish the footy at the end of that game. Game. Especially yeah. after Storm lost to the Knights, eh? they're going to be hard. Yeah, I, I think like I mentioned before, Munster's words about about him criticizing his own team and the effort, mm. you know, that's really unstorm like. So I think they'll get that fixed and they'll get a win. Nice. All right. Uh, that's where that's where the rabbits will then jump into the eight because the eels will drop out after this, after that loss to the storm. And then you got the uh, Raiders. Raiders disappointing last week. Kind of try to make a comeback, but they've got the Knights. Um, yeah, this is should be a good one. Um, with the Knights winning last week, you want to take that side? What do you What are your thoughts on that one? Uh, well, you mentioned the Raiders were disappointing. No, they weren't. They um they were able to claw back and almost almost pull the pants down of the Warriors. Um, are you hating against the Warriors again? Okay, carry on. Facts. One point. <laughs> one point. Um, <clears throat> one point. Um, sorry, bro. Did you say it was Raiders versus Sharks? Knights. Nice. Yeah, nice beating the I just I got distracted because Walsh almost pulled out some magic again. Anyway, bro, um, that's that's a good good close game. I think both teams um, uh, kind of form or form on form, even though the Raiders just lost. I'm gonna say upset um, the Knights. The Knights are gonna be uh, a big fight on the team. They they're pushing for that uh, eighth spot. So um, upset win to the Knights for me, bro. Yeah, I saw the same on that one. Anyone else got anything different? Raiders uh, got some revenge after last week. No, I reckon Raiders. Raiders will pull that one. Hmm. Uh, Daniel Saifidi's ruled out for the Knights, so that might be he's he's one of the crucial players through the yeah, middle. Yeah. Raiders at home as well, so yeah, I'll, I'll go for Rod on that one. Nice. All right, uh, Rog, you guys take on the Dragons. This is the uh, continuation of your run, or is this one of the ones that um? Yep. Dragons pull a foul yeah. on the on you guys. Well, the thing, they, they could because uh, Zach Lomax played pretty good last week as well. And then they've got Ben Hunt, so he's always dangerous. But then I really like uh, that Mikaeli Ravalawa. He's he's a dangerous winger, but he makes some crucial errors at the same time. But with with um, you know barring not having Turbo, we've got a pretty you know well established uh, spine there. Um, and you know, Cola's found his way. Brad Parker's come back from injury, but you know, Ruben Garrick at the back on, in fullback, and you know, with Jason Saab and Christian Tupulotu taking the wingers. So, another game where Josh Schuster is able to st- sort of try and um, establish himself as a six outside Dele Cherry Evans. But you know, we lost Paseca last week, but at the same time, we lose nothing in having Lodge. Uh, you know, starting Lachlan Croker. So it's going to be a good tussle, but, you know, Jake Tupovich and, and then Tuilangi as well coming in at 12. But, uh, yeah, Aaron Aaron Woods on the bench. <laughs> always, <laughs> always makes me a bit nervous. But, um, but no, nah, it's going to be a tussle. And like we say, these two teams are out to Fa'alianga <laughs> each other's season. Yeah. So um, it's going to be interesting, I think, you got Eels, the Eagles, sorry, going in as favourites, but um, they're going to be hoping to get a couple of points so then they can start charging towards their eight. At the same time, the Dragons, you know, they've had a relatively poor season, but they've had a couple of uh, good wins, but, you know, few and far between, unfortunately. But hopefully my Eel, uh, Sea Eagles by 12. Oof. <laughs> 
This going to going to make a statement. Um, Panthers Sharks. Um, man, it's a hard run for the Sharks. You, you wrote them off last week, Stace, saying that their run home would would see them dropping out of the eight. Um, I guess it begins here <laughs> on Saturday night. Um, your thoughts on this Panthers game? Yeah, I sort of agree with that. The Sharks are in free fall at the moment, and they. they... I think they're going to be one of the teams that unfortunately miss out of the eight, which opens it up for someone to come through, potentially your team, Roger, like you've been saying. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that, that edge defense, that left edge is really crucial. And they, I think they will improve just because I don't know if they can get much worse. But the Panthers, yeah, I've said this before, the Panthers are the best team in the comp. So I think they'll get a win. Panthers by 12 on that one. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it'll be hard to see Sharks turn it around. Um... I guess it's their season though, so they need to make some moves. Hamilton Wheeler back up, um, back in the team. Matt Moreland back in, Talaka back in. Um, but that's the thing, yeah. With the with the Raiders, uh, you know, on form, they should beat the Sharks comfortably. But then that just makes that gap even, and then more traffic around that for the seventh and eighth spots. Say eh? it just because there are Sharks, Cowboys are on twenty six, Eels on twenty four. Rabbitohs 24 and they're in ninth. And then Knights and Sea Eagles on 23 and the Roosters on 22, but they're obviously not going to make any gains after tonight, unfortunately. But So, it's, yeah, it's quite congested in that um, from 6 through to 11, 12 even. So should be All interesting right, um, results. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this might be a hard watch. Uh, side Dolphins and Bulldogs. Bulldogs running 16th. Lucky to not be wooden spooners. Um, yeah, both, both teams you can put a line through them, eh? Um, <clears throat> <laughs> but to be honest, bro, I mean, you know, that's just looking at the table and the performances. Um, <clears throat> Dolphins still, um, still tough, you know, the year to play well against them. Doggy is probably the biggest, um, disappointment of the year, bro. Um, oh, we touched on with the yet again. <laughs> yeah, that. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, Dolphins, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say uh, don't care. Probably won't watch that game. But <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but the, the, the interesting thing week? about the Dolphins, they had a really awesome start to the season. Yeah, they, with a hiss and a roar. So you know you can't discard that. They've had a relatively okay season. Yeah, for, it's not a quality uh, team. I think the depth. They don't have the depth. Mm. <clears throat> I think they um, lost their, they lost their uh, halfback for. Uh, yeah, but I think they're well. travelling better than the the doggies are at the moment. The doggies are hit and miss, man. They've they've been uh, smashed by a lot of teams. So um, whereas Dolphins, like they've been in the fight. You know, they haven't really been blown off the park. So in that regard, I think they've had a better year. Um, um, so yeah, it's a Dolphin prob- probably um, in a close one for me. Dolphins for the win. It's interesting you put a line through the Dolphins because if they win, they'll move up to 24. And if we think that Eels <laughs> lose to the Storm, they'll be on the same points, 24 points. Yeah. So uh, I know it's still it's, more they're, they're, they're way down. Yeah, they're, they're, I wouldn't put a line through them just yet because they'll be yeah. on the same well, points as the Eels the- theoretically. Like I said, mathematically it's possible. But look at the eight, bro. Um, I'm picking the only changes I'm picking uh, in the eight because um, I think the Cowboys will stay in there even though they got a tough run, run home. I'm thinking the Sharks will definitely fall out because you have to say the Bunnies are going to get better, bro. So um, who are they going to replace? Out of all those teams in the eight, the Sharks are the ones going worse. So definitely the Bunnies are in there. And how are you going to fit the Dolphins? You got to say who's going to come out. Well, I think the Eels have got the toughest draw. I think they both the Sharks and the Eels will drop out. So the Rabbitohs, I agree with you, they'll come in. And I think one other team's going to come in. Mm. So I see the Dolphins ain't going to be Seagulls. out of it yet. Dolphins will be out of it yet if they win. <laughs> There's a chance for the Sea Eagles if the Eels <laughs> drop out. But the Sea Eagles going to take it from eighth, man. Ooh. Take it from eighth. Yeah, I think there is a stat on that. Maybe. I know Cam Schuster is quite excited with that. <laughs> um. Interesting though, like that, um, yeah, like disappointing for the Bulldogs and Stacey you always mentioned how Serato was brought in as that defensive coach. Um yeah, that, like you know, you look at the, the trend like the, the difference between him and the start that Andrew Webster's had, like how can he be going as the especially as the defense coach to be getting pumped like that by so many points by each team, it's almost like being 
put in his face almost like that. Yeah, what the system that it doesn't work that he's bought, or he's just well. Uh, well, so I mentioned before it. they're getting they're hoping to get rid of Fight Tyler Mariner. They've been linked to every man in this dog. They've signed Blake Taft. They've been linked to Loy, uh, whoever else. So I think that they I don't know if it's right or not, but the Bulldogs think that they've got roster issues, not necessarily coaching issues. So I think they're trying to overhaul their roster to try and get better. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I, I, maybe Seraldo's saying he hasn't got the roster to get it done. Yeah, okay. Cool. Um, final game of the round next week. Um, Titans, Cowboys. Titans, what are we doing there, boys? A line? I'll still give them a good uh, good run. But, uh, yeah, Cowboys are comfortable winners for me. Yeah. I, I like the Cowboys, their game plans. We talked about this last week. They're really good at uh, their game plan and the execution of pinpointing a weak spot on the defense and exploiting it to its full potential. So last week when they played the Eels, I thought they were going to go after Dejan Arce, but it turned out they went after Brendan Hands. So he made yeah, 51 yeah. tackles. Yeah. That's the most he's ever made in his career. The week before that against Manly, they went after Croker. He made 54. That's the second most he's ever made. So the Cowboys are good uh, going after these smaller guys generating that quick ruck speed and good post-contact meters or whatever. And on the back of that, that's where Drinkwater and Dearden and whoever are ripping the opposition to shreds. So it's a real simplistic game plan, but it's got the Cowboys on a six-game win streak. So that's outstanding coaching and game plan execution. I think they'll go after Tanner Boyd. That's who I'm earmarking. Tanner Boyd could be the target this week. He's defending next to Joe Stimson and Jojo Fafita, and they're not that great. So I think, that game plan will work. Well, Luciano Le Lua has been running around. Like, he's been awesome coming back. Um, yeah, and I think Reese Robson, like, off the back of that, um, you know, his New South Wales um, debut as well. Like, he's been going awesome. Uh, I think, like, yeah, very similar to, like, the Warriors. Like, no huge, you know, game breakers. Like, um, Scott Drinkwater has been awesome for them. But just, yeah, real team play. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess... Um, and Todd Payton's done a big switch around. I don't know what happened at the beginning of the year, but yeah, I, is I Tino, might have is Tino injured? Or is he suspended? Um, he's not yeah, in no, there. Tino's been out for yeah, a Yeah, he, he, he set out the last game. I'm not too sure why. Is it because um, he's still trying to get the capacity because he's not contracted? But then, oh, oh man, Ruben Cotter, like you say, Luciano Lelua. Oh, so the cuz is on the bench, uh, sorry. What's that? And if, and if on the bench. Nah, he's um, he's missed out. He just he might have played play that one game. Injury got him out, but um, yeah, he's um, in the yeah, he's, just, he's, just he's in, in the, the reserves. Uh, yeah, in the squad. But, so um, it was Ken Mo Malo. Hey, Ken, Ken Mo Malo. Yeah, right? Ken Mo Malo. Man, he hasn't played all year. I don't think so. But yeah. I mean, David Fafita's still there, so that's you know they've still got a decent quality roster, bro. Yeah, it's just. They don't seem to be getting the results, eh? Mm. 